you sitting in the house for? God willing, they'll have another birthday. You just need to get out here to get where you're going. Don't come out here being clueless, okay? Okay. Diamonds on my neck, got diamonds on my records Since 16 I'm coming down my ellipses How you gon' neglect this? You was just a hot mess You can call Tyrone, you ain't got some lockers Hey you gang, welcome back to another video If you're new here, this is Truly Alexis And I am Alexis And I make videos on fashion, beauty, and lifestyle And today's video is going to be a car talk About me living in Atlanta for the past three years I actually moved down here to go to grad school. And so I feel like I am a seasoned Atlanta, Georgia resident. I have a few things that I want to share with y'all just about my move, my experience, life living here, the areas to live here if you're interested in moving here, places to go and visit, the fun things. So. I have a little bit of everything in this video. I asked my Instagram friends and followers to ask me any questions that they've ever thought of when it comes to either living or visiting in Atlanta. So I wrote them all down. I have my notebook. This is my first car talk ever. So I hope y'all enjoy this format of a video. And so I'm just gonna go through each of them one by one. I hope that at least one of them is interesting to you and if it is be sure to give me a thumbs up down below and also if you're new here and you like this video and my other content be sure to subscribe so you'll never miss a video and without further ado let's get right into the video okay so let's get into the first question what was my biggest change from texas to atlanta so if you don't know me like personally or have watched my channel for a while you know that i was born and raised in texas and I live in a very small town. It's called Carthage, Texas. A lot of people don't know where Carthage is because there's only like 6,000 people. So I just tell them deep East Texas, close to Louisiana. So small country town, farm town, not a lot of city life going on there. Not a lot of people, not too many different influences, um, honestly. Um, many of the people there do the same thing. Not saying that other people don't have like other outlooks and stuff on life but living in a small town you would know like certain people like do things a certain way throughout all of their life and generations to come in most cases so predominantly white area there are you know other races as well but predominantly white and um just the move from texas to atlanta in general texas is known as you know red state very Republican. Atlanta is super, I want to say diverse, but <laughs> it's like the exact opposite of Texas. Um, so Georgia in general can mirror Texas a lot, like the outskirts, but Atlanta specifically, like the biggest difference was just like how many people that look like me are out here. And then look like me that are doing things that only other people would like be dreaming about like there's just so much like black excellence here and people like really grinding and hustling so many black owned businesses whenever i first visited atlanta i was like all the uber drivers are black like we're going to all these black owned places uh <laughs> all the people at chick-fil-a <laughs> working in there are black like it's just total difference like to be transparent never seen this many black people in my life growing up in a small town so that and then just the city aspect so i did go to college um on the outskirts well i would say farther than the outskirts like 40 35 40 minutes away from houston so i did have some touches with like the city life um in college and then like back at home we would like travel to dallas all the time but atlanta is like a lot more um than that so yeah, just the difference of being in the city versus a small town is big in general. And then cultural differences in people as well. So the next question is, how did I budget my move? <laughs> Good one. I didn't. So I moved to Atlanta in the summer of 2019 and I graduated the spring of 2019. So I had applied to SCAD to grad school in the fall. 
and I got accepted. I was flying home from my study abroad trip on the flight from Germany back to um, Texas, to the US. So we had went to Dubai and we had a layover in Germany. And so on that flight, I had got an email that I had been accepted, y'all. Oh, I can still like picture that day, but anyway. So I got accepted in the winter. And so I started like planning sort of my move. Like I was telling everybody, like I got accepted, I'm going. Like, I don't really think that my family believed me that much. I mean, they might have, cause they know that I've always been like independent and spearheaded when it comes to saying like what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna do it. So I was working at the school, I had an admissions, job um i just got like a promotion so i was making like ten dollars an hour i thought i was a, okay from 7 25 to 10 i thought i was doing something and then i was also vice president of the student body so we got a stipend um all the cabinet members or whatever got a stipend every month so i think that was like 900 dollars. so i was trying to like save and spend but also get ready for like spring break and graduation and all of that and it's really hard to save like being in college so i really wasn't budgeting that much like i put 900 dollars to the side and my rent <laughs> at my first apartment here was 838 dollars so as you can see i didn't budget that much i was still heavily depending on like my mom um she paid my rent all through college and like would transfer me money here and there aside from my job but yeah, I really didn't budget that much. Really relied on her a lot. But I did make sure that I had a job before moving down here. So I moved down here for school, strictly school. But I knew like I can't come down here without a job. So I had applied to an internship at Dillard's and I ended up working there. And that's why I moved in the summer instead of like right before school started because I wanted to go ahead and like start my job, start making a little bit of money, um, getting a good schedule and like a good layout of the land <laughs> before I started school. So I didn't budget. I'm really thankful for my mom, my support system for sure. Um, like my aunties, my dad, like other people around me just in the community, they've always poured into me. Whew. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> what I was saying was people have always poured into me and I'm cut okay what I was saying was people have always poured into me financially and then aside from that as well and I've always been a believer of God growing up in the church so I knew everything was going to be okay so moving down to the next question, what's your advice financially that you can give someone seeking to move to a different state? So unlike me, <laughs> have at least two months of expenses saved up if you don't have anybody or anything to fall back on um, like I did. Also, I want to say have an accepted job offer in the state before moving. Like, make sure that you're going to have a stream of income coming in, like, when you get there. Okay. And then another one, research the cost of living. So, living out here is a lot more expensive than it is living in Texas. I didn't really realize that as much until I started paying everything myself and then like comparing like oh my college apartment was this and then my line sisters are saying that they're paying this and then our rates are like this so i didn't do a whole lot of research honestly the way i moved down here it was a lot like i was supposed to get one apartment and ended up um not staying with that person and ended up just having to sign a lease without even seeing the apartment that i was in i'll get into that later though because other people ask me about that but yeah just research the cost of living so you know like what's minimum wage here like what are um the salaries looking like for what i want to do what are the jobs paying um also how much are the apartments what's the standard like water bill da, 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 utilities you know just research and then I would also say cut corners where you can. So when I moved down here, I moved into a student apartment. I lived with three random people. 
but what was most important for me was getting out here like i was going to figure out the rest later i did my year in that apartment and then moved to somewhere where i was more comfortable i want to say always be somewhere safe like definitely do research on and i will tell y'all some good areas to live out here like make sure that you're somewhere safe but if the cabinets aren't the color that you want you're only there for a year like it is okay <laughs> like the design might not be aesthetically pleasing but as long as you have a roof over your head and you feel safe it's okay like this is only your start you just need to get out here to get where you're going so the next question is how was your scat experience this is a fun one um, the person said, I'm considering getting my master's there. So I went to SCAD for my master's in luxury and fashion management. Here I am, a girl. And what I can say about SCAD is go. Stop thinking about it. Apply. If you get accepted, come down here and go to school there. When I tell you the first quarter I was doing real life experiences, like in my industry like working with businesses we worked with the georgia world congress center like designing their youth uniforms rebranding them my first quarter like you will get real life experience working with so many different businesses and brands and when i tell you scad rides for their students they will put you on like i already like i found my job without scad but if i needed something scad was going to come through like whether you're a student or you're an alumni like they take that <laughs> loyalty the school loyalty to the heart to the core like they're always sending stuff i still have like full access um to my portal and everything there's a separate like alumni portal they have events all the time they invite me out to where i need to go but everything that i learned within my curriculum is something that I would use if I was in my industry. And I'm currently in a sector of my industry, but like my current day-to-day -day job is not doing what I learned, but I do work like in the fashion world. So there's that. Um, my roommate, she's doing exactly what, she's in merchandising, so she's doing like exactly what we learned in school. So like everything that you learn won't be a waste. And there's so many different um, avenues that you can take within SCAD if you're into like arts and the creative industries and all of that. And I will say like my professors knew what they were talking about and they worked in the industry. They had so much experience and so much to pour into us. And then also just the connections that you make like with your professors and with um, other alumni, like with students while you're there they really live on forever like some of my classmates reach out to me all the time on linkedin and then i connect with other people who i might not have even had a class with or like saw when i was there but just because i was a scad alumni they were able to help me and connect me with somebody else um or just like give me information on something that i'm interested in like i've definitely striked up a few conversations on LinkedIn through that. I graduated in 2020, the fall of 2020, and it's now 2022. And I'm still like in touch with like my professors. My finance professor helped me do my 401k plan last year for the job I have now. Like he gave me all these recommendations and I did exactly that. And baby, when I said the retirement plan is looking good. But anyway, yes. The talent is crazy at SCAD. Go. Just stop thinking about it. It's a great school. Definitely go. Oh, and even my friend works for SCAD now. He absolutely loves it. Shout out to you, David. Y'all probably, ooh, I don't know if y'all seen David on here. But y'all will see David. I'm going to Savannah to visit him soon, this month. So I might be vlogging. If not, catch me on Instagram. All right, so the next question is the city versus the suburbs. <laughs> so on tiktok i call myself small town city girl because i love the aspect of like small town and suburbs and the city but i love the suburbs the most honestly so i love the excitement of the city don't get me wrong but in the suburbs i just feel like the sense of community which is like more of what i grew up with more of what i'm used to 
and then also there's just like not a lot going on for me in the city nowadays so when i first moved there i worked in the city and i went to school in the city but now that i have a new job in buckhead well it's not new anymore I've been there for almost two years but <laughs> now that i work outside of the city and i live outside of the city unless i'm just going out i really don't need to go to the city so i'm a suburban girl now <laughs> Where are the suburban black girls who still had hood ass mamas? Like you grew up in the suburbs, you know, like for me, my first best friend was white girl. I played soccer, loved Britney Spears and Spice Girls and all that good stuff. But my mama was hood and still is hood. So the next question goes with the last question. How was it like living in the city and living in my old apartment? So. Living in the city was super convenient because like I said, I worked in the city and I went to school in the city. And then the city just has like more touristy things. So I feel like it was a good move for me to live there whenever I first moved there. But now <laughs> I don't really need to be like over there that much. And then my old apartment, my old apartment has a very bad reputation that I didn't know about until after I moved out of it. But I see why. So my old apartment was a student apartment and it's just, it's one of those apartments where they take pictures of the highlights and the good things, but it's really not good there y'all. Like safety wise, it's trashy, honestly, cause the students don't really care. So they're doing whatever. And then some people that they let stay there, I don't even think they're students, but anyway, yeah. It was good for me to live amongst other students because I was kind of like, worried about like finding like people who are still like in my age group like whenever I moved out here because I was like oh I'm a big student like <laughs> I, I don't know if y'all know what I mean but like I had already graduated college but I was still considered a student but I didn't want to be like hanging around like people that were much much older than me so it was nice to like live amongst other students and some of the students there were grad students so that was good but you couldn't pay me to live back in my old apartment, y'all. If you move here, do not live at Westmar. I'll just leave it at that. So the next question is, what were some of my struggles? So the biggest struggle that I had um, initially and I'm still working on, I feel like I've gotten so much better at it now. It was FOMO. So the fear of missing out. I really struggled with it bad whenever I first moved out because it was like, birthday parties cookouts family get-togethers my friends going to hang out together on the weekends and it's like i'm out here literally no no one i eventually came to realize that i do know people out here but whenever i first moved out here it was like wow like i'm really out here by myself i made this move by myself but then like I met some extended family that I had out here and like Austin was out here and then I made friends with my coworkers and like Bree and Courtney were out here. So I made friends and I made my own memories here, but it was just like getting through in my head like, it's okay that I'm missing out on this stuff. I'm not really missing out because I'm focusing on growing like for myself. God willing, they'll have another birthday. God willing, there'll be another cookout. God willing, there'll be another party. You know, like, it's okay that I'm not there. I can't be there for everything. And I would travel back and forth, and I still do. But, like, now, I'm really at a place where it's like, if I can't do it, I can't do it. Like, because now I have to factor in travel ex expenses, and some people don't get that. And it's like, it's okay if you don't get that. But unless you're paying for my travel... I can't come I'm, so, I'm sorry and it's like now I have my own life and my own things going on so I wouldn't expect you to come up here for everything that I do so I have to be okay with not you know going back home for everything so yeah that's a big also, one of not caring that I was alone this one wasn't a big one because I've always been like okay like doing my own thing and my dad like always like talks about me in a good way about that like I would be off in a corner like painting rocks like 
I'm fine. Like, I'm in my room, like, chilling, like, don't have friends over. Like, I'm cool, but I can also be social as well. I like to call myself a social introvert. So whenever I first moved down here, my mom, uh, my aunt, my cousin, and Jaden helped me move down here. And then Jaden stayed the night with me while they stayed at the hotel. And then when they all left, like, early, like, in the morning, I had cried. And then after that, I was good. Like, I literally haven't been homesick since I've been out here unless it's been, like, for a few hours because a certain event is going on and I'm not there, but, like, I'm over it. So, I've always been okay with, like, doing things on my own, and I think that that comes from my parents, too. Like, how they raised me. Like, family was always big, but they raised me to be independent. So, like, if I needed to go do something, like, I could do it. Like... Yeah, I could call my mom for advice, call my dad, but I'm okay with going out and doing things by myself. But I do enjoy having people over. I had wrote down a few more struggles, so I'll just read them off. Um, relearning how to parallel park. I'm not bad at it at all, but it was just that I'd have to do it all this freaking time. So relearning that from not doing it since like my driver's test. Um, at the end of my degree, working full time and finishing my degree. So the current job that I have now, I got it like the last two quarters of my degree. So just finding that balance. Um, during the pandemic, I decided not to go back to my job after they had opened back up because I had just, I had been looking for something better and I was like, I'm just going to stay on unemployment and find me something better. So finding a better paying job during a panty, I know that was probably hard for everybody. So I have been job hunting for like seven months and finally found something sustainable. And then budgeting slash saving while living paycheck to paycheck. I honestly just got that down. We'll just like stop living paycheck to paycheck. Um, but yeah, trying to budget and save when you don't really have that much to save was a struggle. So someone else asked a few of my downfalls. This is like the last serious question and then we'll get to the fun. So thank so. y'all for making it this far throughout the video if you're still watching. So a few of my downfalls, accepting a job that was too good to be true. So before my current job, I had accepted a job to be like, I can't even remember what it was. It was like a social media coordinator slash marketing coordinator at this like startup accounting firm. It was just really messy lots of drama they said that they were going to pay me all this and they didn't and it was just a mess y'all like the structure was a mess the owner of it and like the person that she appointed as her cfo they were like best friends but they were catty and it was just i didn't last at the job a month and i've never quit a job in my life ever but i had to leave y'all i had to Besides that, getting my car booted twice, getting Jeremy's car booted and Capri's car booted all at my last apartment because their parking policy was terrible. Y'all, it was like, if you had guests over, you had to get like a day pass. You had to sign them in at the main office. Then you had to go um, put the pass in their car. Then they had to like scan the pass in to get in the gate. And then if they spent the night at like eight or nine in the morning the pass would expire so then you'd have to go and do the process all over again so that was a mess and then how i got my own car booted i can't even remember honestly my phone just overheated so if the angle is different that's why but anyway back to what i was saying so another thing that happened in the parking garage i ran into the pole in the parking garage and i busted up the side of my car don't ask how i did it um dylan chewed up my freaking carpet there's a hole currently in the carpet in my room in my current apartment so i'm anxiously waiting to see how much that damage is going to cost me and then on a more serious note i had to miss my big mama's funeral we were in a pandemic all the flights were banned texas also had some weird thing that you couldn't like drive in on like certain highways because they were trying to like barricade to stop covid and then also even if i found a way to get there there was a limit on how many people could be um at the funeral actually i don't even think they could have a funeral i think it was just like a grave site service so yeah you do have to, you might have to miss out on important moments but that's okay
So the next thing on a lighter note, all of these, the rest of the questions are much lighter questions. So best memory so far, bonding with Capri on the field trip that we took to the George Congress, George, Georgia World Congress Center with SCAD. So that was our first day, like really bonding together. We had sat together on the bus and then we were singing No Guidance on the bus. And I was like, that's my song, that's your song. And yeah. Anyway, from there it was history. My coworkers helping me shoot my shot at Jeremy. Swish after a Dillard's fashion show. So I had walked in the fashion show. It it's a story for another raising day. Dylan. Well, helping raising Dylan with Jeremy and his sister. We got him during the pandemic and Y'all, that was the best time to get a dog because we were in the house. We got to potty train him and just see him grow and blossom from the little pup he was. In my thesis, I honestly can't picture where I was when I did it, but I know I was happy about it. Happy to be done. Two degrees. Not one, two degrees. Hopping and hopping on a party bus with a bunch of random people except for one person that I knew. So Lewis was down here. Lewis is my friend from college. He was down here for the weekend and we ended up going bar hopping on Edgewood. And then one of my friends, I had seen him, one of my friends that I used to do Forex with. Oh my God, bro. Oh, hey. I had seen him at the bar. He was like, hey, we got a party bus. Like, come on, we just hopped on the bus, y'all. Bus full of freaking people we don't even know. That was a great night. A more recent one, taking my mom to see The Color Purple. The Color Purple is her favorite movie. And so for one of her Christmas gifts, I got her tickets up here to see The Color Purple in theater. And so we went this past May. And then my papa getting to see me graduate. That was super special to me that he was able to come. Going to a free Lil Yachty concert with Austin and Trey Lynn whenever I first moved down here. <laughs> I don't know if they still have events like that, but I feel like there were so many events whenever I first moved down here that were absolutely free, and that was just amazing. The next one is what are a few favorite spots that you and Capri like to go to? So number one, I wrote down Pasha, which is a Mediterranean restaurant slash lounge. They have really good food, good drinks, and good hookah. And on the weekends, they have a DJ. I actually have a TikTok about it, so if y'all haven't seen it, it kind of went viral. So y'all can go see that. Our favorite seafood spot that she found was Pirate's Boil. Way better than Juicy Crab. Don't debate me, debate your mama. Cafe Circa. We always end up sitting at the bar at Cafe Circa, but somehow after a few shots, we be having a good time. Turn it up. Um, the Target in Midtown. The Buckhead one is trash, so go to the one in Midtown. Um, shopping also at Akira and Perimeter Mall. And then a last minute brunch when we can't find like any other places to go to with availability because we didn't make a reservation. Tapello Honey is really good. Um, it's near like Chastain area, outside of Buckhead. Y'all, my edge is trying to come up. That's how y'all know it's hot. And y'all can probably see I got more of a glow now because I'm sweating. So let me keep going. Favorite happy hour spots, Tom, Dick, and Hanks, y'all. They have really good barbecue, but they have really good like happy hour specials too on the drinks and the hookah and the food. Finn and Feathers is always a good time if you're trying to go out and you're trying to have a good time go to Finn and feathers make a reservation though because they don't play about that cirque blue they have good daily specials like every single day of the week they have something different um they have daiquiris and they have seafood um cirque is the original place but cirque blue is better in my opinion so i will go there Crew Hookah Lounge, I believe Crew is like everywhere now, but there's like four or five in Atlanta. So any one of those. On Tuesdays, they have Taco Tuesday, $2 tacos, $2 shots, $2 margaritas, hookah specials too. Always a good like chill vibe, unless you go on the weekends and you're trying to turn up because everybody be there too. And then Republic Social House is a cute, um, chill rooftop place to go to good drink specials also good food you might have to wait a little bit for the food but 
still a nice place to go. And then Harold's Chicken and Ice Bar. That's on Edgewood. Harold's has everyday, all day happy hour. Harold's is always a good time. You can catch the game and you can catch something else. Okay? Something else is good. Like a good vibe. <laughs> Because people are always in their turn, always in their lid, and the chicken good, the fish. I normally get the fried fish sandwich. Yes. So next, favorite brunch places, Lily's, that's in Buckhead, Boogaloo, where's Boogaloo? I think Boogaloo's like downtown. Atlantis, that's like Cheshire Bridge area. The Hive, downtown. Sweet Food Lounge, downtown. Rock South, Brookhaven. Escobar. Esco bars off Peter Street, so downtown. And then breakfast at Barney's I recently went to. It lived up to the hype, for sure. Oh, and last one, Toast on Linux. That's in Buckhead area as well. So the next question, my favorite place to meditate and eat. So honestly, I don't meditate. So I just wrote down some places that I like to get work done. So any coffee shop that I haven't tried already. I love going and exploring new coffee shops and just doing like solo coffee shop dates. But I like going with people too. Tomorrow, me and my coworker are trying a new one. So if I like it, I'll let y'all know. And then going to the library, I did that a few times whenever I first moved out here. And then the rooftop at my job. And then my favorite places to eat so hard because I love going and trying new places, but I did write a few down and I broke them down by category. So for Mexican food, I love La Perella. Per Perella. <laughs> They have a few different locations and it just reminds me of Tex-Mex. So the Mexican food we had back at home. So love that place. For fast food, I always go to the cookout. For Mediterranean food, I mentioned Pasha, which I like Pasha, but I also like Kebablin for like a chill vibe where I don't feel like getting dressed up and all of that. And they have good hookah. And then seafood, y'all heard Pirates Boil. Soul food, I love Pascal's. I think that's how you pronounce it. I hope so. But um, that's like close to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And they also have one in the airport. Y'all, the fried chicken, the smothered chicken, the macaroni, the yams, the cock. Everything is good. And then ice cream. I love Jenny's. And I'm a Bluebell girl. Born and raised in Texas. Yeah. But up here, the best I'm going to get. <laughs> out and about is Jenny's and Jenny's is good they um make the waffle cones homemade so yeah love a good Jenny's cone so the last two questions have to deal with moving to Atlanta so the first one would you recommend someone to move here and I wrote down a few things so if the city excites you so the city life excites you and it's something that you're open to yes if you have interest in branching out and not just being in the house all day because coming to Atlanta, like, what you sitting in the house for? Like, it's so much stuff to do, so many people out, like, you know? If you like black people <laughs> and our culture and supporting black excellence, yes. If you're self-motivated, self-disciplined, yes. Because there are a lot of different influences out here and not all can be good. And if you're aware and alert, I love it here, but it's not the safest by record. Don't come out here being clueless, okay? Okay. And then the last one wasn't a question, but people ask me this all the time. So I just decided to include it. So some good areas to live in. I currently live in Brookhaven. So love it. I feel safe, good sense of community. People got sense, it's clean. Thumbs up for Brookhaven, North Decatur, so North Druid Hills area. Jeremy used to live there. Nice area as well. Sandy Springs area, so that's even more north. Um, Atlanta. And then Chastain area as well. That's on the outskirts of Buckhead, so a little bit more north too. Shambly area, right around the corner from Brookhaven. Dunwoody, more north as well. And then if you really, really, really just want to live in the city, I get it. I get it. I honestly might. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not moving into the city this year, my next apartment. But one day I might like want to redo like living in the city with like a better apartment and stuff. So maybe. 
I would suggest West Midtown or Atlantic Station, but they are more expensive. But everywhere is expensive, honestly. Living in the North is expensive too. So pick your poison. I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. If y'all are interested in living in Atlanta, I hope that what I said will help you on your journey, your upcoming journey. If you're just interested in visiting, I hope that y'all try out some of these places. It has been a great three years. Honestly, one of the best decisions that I've made in my life. I often say it's in my top three of decisions. I don't know what one and two is, but it's in there. <laughs> it's up there and I'm loving it. I don't have any plans to move anytime soon. Right now, my tunnel vision is still here in Atlanta. I'm enjoying it. I feel like I have more opportunities to tap into here, more people to tap into as well. So I'll be here. And if you want to be here with me, make sure to subscribe down below and I will catch y'all on the next video.